Oh, I okay. Have. So this session here is about um, why Connect Three. So you kind of put the why out, and what this is all about is developing your own team and training for your develop your own team. So, one of you guys feel comfortable uh, reading? It's quite a bit there, but the why Connect Three section. I'm seeing the middle of your screen of the previous lesson. Yeah. Thank you. The, the Zoom has changed that to where you got to refresh your share screen throughout your presentation. They're probably making a lot of changes right now. Yeah, there's a lot of security stuff that's happening with them since so many people are on. Okay, you guys see it now? Yeah, we see it now. Okay, thanks. Would you mind reading that? I got it. Um, why Connect3? Connect3, C3 teams, provide an environment where men can connect to God, connect to one another, and for the cause of bringing the gospel of Jesus Christ into the workplace. Also known as C3, these teams allow men to invest, support, and pray for one another. These teams have become invaluable in the process of Christian growth within the men involved. C3 teams meet in cities across the country on a regular, usually weekly basis. CBMC coined the phrase marketplace ambassador to describe the man who seeks to grow in the relationship with Jesus Christ to share the gospel in the marketplace. To be an ambassador for Christ is based on 2 Corinthians 5.20. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. The purpose of C3 teams, you want me to keep going? Yeah, please read stop? that whole section if you don't mind. Okay, yeah, sure. The purpose of C3 teams is to train and equip marketplace ambassadors who live out their calling and impact their sphere of influence for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Intentionality is key and is experienced when we have others in our life to encourage us in this process. As Proverbs 27 proclaims, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. Connect three teams are a platform where this process can happen. What are the benefits of joining a Connect three team? Strong encouragement that comes from meeting weekly with men that seek to be marketplace ambassadors. Discover how to integrate your faith into your workplace in a manner that will result in maximum buy-in and success. Learn how to master best practices of engaging the non-believer right where he is. Exciting discussions on how best to approach, then mentor another man to deepen his intimacy with Christ. Very good. Thanks for reading that, Rick. We're going to watch this short video together. This kind of gives you uh, CBMC's view of this, and they're, they're actually updating this video. There might be a new one soon, but here's what they had in the past. Imagine what it would be like to have a group of guys from diverse backgrounds in business, family, and age to help you connect with God, one another, and the cause of the gospel, and be more effective as a Christian at work, at home, and in your personal life. A CBMC Connect3 team might be exactly what you need. You know, the vision of Connect3 is really to be reaching out through small groups and, and interpersonal relationships that we can build that are really tight-knit with each other. I benefit tremendously by being a Connect3 member. It allows me to be a marketplace ambassador on a daily basis. It's a group of um, guys that I can be intentional with and are intentional with me and helping me understand what it means to be a Christian in the business world. Being part of this group gives me the ability to just, you know, connect with guys who are older, younger than me, that we can talk life. Just how to deal with all the ethical and um, moral issues that can happen to a Christian while in the workplace. I think it's important for me to be able to help and support those guys around us so that at the community level, we're, we're making a difference with our family and our businesses. Connect3 teams leverage your influence in the marketplace and as a result, equip you for your role as a marketplace ambassador. You'll also discover that praying for the non-believers within your sphere of influence and helping them take steps toward Christ can be one of the most rewarding activities of a Connect3 team. If you'd like to join or start a CBMC Connect3 team in your area, contact CBMC online or email us to learn more and get connected today. 
So what Rick read in the video we just watched, did anything in there really speak to your heart? Uh, is that something you'd want to be a part of? I mean, I already shared my heart. I'm kind of pretty pumped about this already. I've been looking, Chuck, you know, I've been, I retired to do ministry and I think this is probably part of it. So I'm pretty pumped because I've been, I've been praying and God's been silent, somewhat silent on what he wanted me to do and it's all coming together. So I'm pretty excited about it. I want the evangelism discipleship. I'm sick of being in groups that are just fellowship and we all try to fix each other. I want groups that love each other and pray for each other and try to reach guys for Christ because these guys don't need fixing. They need love and we need to go after the lost. That's just my passion. So awesome. Mike, I've got you muted, uh, but you want to unmute yourself and uh, is this still something you want to be a part of? I fell in love with the idea of loving a man to Jesus and figuring out where that's at with my unique background, I still go to pool halls and shoot pool. And guess what? They do a lot of it, pool halls, a lot of drinking, a lot of broken people. And so I'm frequently around broken people. All right. Well, let's dig in here. Uh, one thing you do is find a Connect3 team here. You click and they've got a database of teams. If there's not a team in your area, you can start one yourself. So, that, so well, that's what we're talking about is starting a Connect3 team. Um, Mike, you want to read this? Or you want me to? Dude, I, I, I can't read it. I'm on my phone. Okay, I'll read this one. If you are passionate about connecting with God and want to be connected with others who share and cultivate that passion, consider becoming a Connect 3 team leader and start a team in your area. If you're a person of influence and want to use that influence for kingdom purposes, consider becoming a C3 team leader. Connect 3 teams leverage your influence and as a result, equip you for your role as an ambassador for Christ. If you want to be intentional in cultivating relationships that will help you become the person God designed you to be, register to get the C3 team leader training. There is great value in doing life alongside others who are also committed to living out the Great Commission on a daily basis. Intentionality is the key and can be experienced more effectively when we have others in our life to encourage us in this process. And then they got some information on how you guys can start uh, and that's right there for you. A couple testimonials on the right. Then you simply register here for a self-study training. This is the training that I showed you guys earlier. That's this manual here. So it's right here on this page, cbmc.com forward slash connect three, and then register for self-study training. And then they'll give you access to the manual. So here you can register your team. Whoa, whoa, whoa. All right. Go back up there one more second. So it's C oh, it's at the top. CSM, CBMC.com, Connect3, okay. Yep. Forward slash Connect3. And then there's a register for self-study, okay. Yep. Okay. And then there's a register your team when you are ready to start your team. So okay. there's your two links. So let's click on register for self-study. And they are in the process of updating this Connect3 training. So this may be a little different than what I printed out and have been using. Yeah, basically you register here and then Victor Dawson, who leads this effort for CBMC, will work with the staff at the corporate uh, the ministry center and get the this link to this manual for you, okay? So that's how you register. That $20 registration there, they're no longer, I don't think that's applicable anymore. I don't, I don't think they're charging that anymore. They start out doing that in the beginning, but I, I know I paid that, but I don't think they require that anymore. So... Um, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of go through some of this with you guys. Uh, we're not going to spend a whole lot of time, but I do want to get you grounded. And then we'll meet. Uh, Mike and I were meeting on a monthly basis with this current situation. We may up it to weekly if Mike, if your schedule allows that, to where we can get through it a little faster. But um, session one, there's the training is divided up into three sessions. And the first session is um, the team. Learn the definition of a Connect3 team. Discover four key steps involved in establishing a team. And explore six essential steps in equipping the team for maximum ministry impact. So it's a lot of material. We probably won't get through it in, in today. Uh, but it'll give you, upon completion of all three of these sessions, you will have a plan of action for establishing and equipping your team over the next year 
and you'll be recognized as a certified CBMC Connect 3 team leader. So the first session is the team, which I just described. The second session is the leader, where you can examine some ways God prepares the Connect 3 leader, explore relational calling, universal calling, and individual calling, and then define the role of the leader as a servant, shepherd, overseer, and equipper. And then the third and final session of the training is the meeting, the impact. We're Examine. not seeing. Hey, Chuck, we're not yeah, there's, seeing. There's nothing to see. I, I don't, I don't oh. have. I don't, oh, I don't good, have good, good. Here. Okay, good, good. Yeah, okay. But thank you. Thank you for letting me know. Okay. Uh, you actually register for this self-study, and then they send you the link to get this here. Uh, so session three is the meeting, the impact. They examine some best practices on how to conduct your meeting. Consider the potential of reproducing leaders and teams, which is, in my heart, that's what this is all about. Discuss and embrace the fruit, the ends of realizing God's vision for CBMC. And then learn about resources that support the Connect3 leader and the team. So I'll show you guys my screen. Maybe you can see. Let me stop the share so you can see better. This here is the table of contents for all three sessions. So you can see it's pretty extensive. But this first session is uh, defining a Connect, a Connect 3 team. So in each session is a pre-assignment. So you would actually do your homework ahead of time and they just ask you some questions. I'll just quickly go through those questions. Uh, the first one, is we indicate that it is best to recruit to the mission and vision of CBMC rather than a meeting or event. What attracted you to CBMC? How were you recruited? And so again, as I mentioned before we started this, CBMC is not about building CBMC. CBMC is about ministry. And so when they use the term, you know, what attracted you to CBMC, it's really, you know, what connected you to this type of ministry? What, what, what attracted you to marketplace ambassador. And so I wrote my answer there. And my answer, I'll just share with you. Uh, my dad was on staff with CBMC many decades ago. And before that, a local leader in ministry. So I've grown up with this Operation Timothy and Living Proof. And in a household that lived CBMC's mission and vision. Although just now, officially getting reinvolved in CBMC through my good friend, Victor Dawson and Mike Basie here locally, I've been called to a life of discipleship and evangelism, and I believe CBMC offers the best tools available to equip a man for that purpose. So that was my answer, but each of you will be a little different. Number two, we indicate that team purpose needs to be clear and compelling, and that the alignment with purpose happens when there's an intersection between an individual's goals and those of the team. What is it about CBMC's mission and purpose that you find to be compelling? My answer to that was, I'm called to go and make disciples. CBMC's mission and purpose is focused on that being the main thing, which aligns with my purpose. Question three, how does that intersection with your own personal mission? For me, it's total alignment with my personal mission which is plunder hell and populate heaven. I want and ask God to use me and make me a discipleship maker and a, a, a disciple maker of discipleship makers. So let me try to repeat what I've got right here. Uh, a discipleship maker of discipleship makers. That's what I've asked God to allow me to be. Last question in this pre-session assignment is question number four. What is the value of spending significant time equipping your Connect3 team in the fundamentals, fundamentals of a fruitful CBMC ministry? The value is eternal. As we impact the whole world through multiplication, we allow God to make us an example for Connect3 teams around the globe. So guys, that was my pre-assignment questions and answers. It just really helps you figure out if this is really something you want to align yourself with. And then if so, once you've done that, it helps you allow God to bring like-minded people in your path. Because Rick, like you and I were just talking right before our session here today, this is not for everybody. You know, there are some Bible studies out there that are more fellowship-oriented, more just Bible study. There's some that are prayer meeting. This 
kind of has a balance with a focus on evangelism and discipleship. So any questions or comments about the pre questions from you two guys? No. Did you say we should not be paying $20 for this though? There is not a fee. I don't think anymore to get this information. Cause I'm on there and I'm getting ready to go through it. And, and then, so I, I'm just wondering if I'm supposed to pay it or not. Well, if it makes you pay it, I guess you pay it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I paid it, Mike. Uh, it can't hurt. It go, it's going to help CBMC. Yeah, it's a so good, it's, a, it's a, to a good cause. Right. All right. So I this, think, I ahead. think something interesting you said, Chuck, is Please. when you pull guys into this, you are pulling guys in to be leaders on this that are want desperately discipleship and evangelism, because that is the primary focus of these. And, I think you almost have to have an intersection. You can't have somebody that's not super passionate about that and say, okay, here we go, because that's the focus of all this stuff, you know? <laughs> Although you know, I think th 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 that's a great point, but let me, let me, let me touch on that because it's, I'm glad you brought that up. When I first started my initial team, I prayed and sought out guys who had a heart for discipleship and they were gung ho. Cause I think to start your team, that's where you start. As you go through the living proof and as you go through the material, it teaches you how to share your faith. And when you share your faith with somebody and you have that person who hopefully God leads you to someone who actually receives Christ and wants to grow, I recommend starting one of these Connect 3 teams right away with that new person and their sphere of influence. Because typically they'll have two or three people that are in the same place they are that they want to learn. And so you really start your Connect 3 team way before they have a passion for this. And you take a couple years mentoring these guys, coaching these guys, and teaching these guys all along with the purpose of them reproducing at some point. And one thing my dad taught me really well, Rick, is you don't have to become a, a theologian to disciple a man. You just have to be one page ahead of them. <laughs> you know? So right. it, like in Operation Timothy, if you study chapter one, you're ready to teach someone chapter one. And that's when you really learn anyway, is when you're facilitating and, and coaching someone. So great point. Your initial group, I highly recommend you get guys that are gung-ho. But then as it multiplies, man, I think that's where you just – newbies are awesome. Yeah, I, I've been doing – you know, I've been doing one-on-one -on -one ministry for about three years, and it's interesting. Some guys will grow into something like this, and some guys won't, and they kind of peter out. You know, it's going to be – and what I'm hoping is to make a little – be praying about it, make a little judgment call about it to where I can lead that one guy. And like you said, if, I think if he can catch – you know, I can get him interested in this, then we could start another team and start drawing other guys in. Some guys never quite – lift off if you know what I mean um, so I'm gonna have to have a little discernment as I'm going through the guy that's really gun ho and he is starting to grow in Christ and some I met with guys Chuck and they never even became believers you know I never even got that far you know so it's gonna have to be based on how but what I like about this is I think I, now I have a tool that if they are starting to take off I'm not gonna pull them into one of my studies I want to start another group you know and, and seed them out like that because probably out of the guys I get probably one out of four might take off maybe two or four if I'm really blessed two out of four so I could seed groups out of that instead of just hey let's just keep meeting um let's because it has to evolve at some point because it kind of you know what I mean all great points and uh Mike who's on here with us today is a great example of a guy who was attending early on he was seeking so he joined our group with no intention of you know necessarily leading a group but early on in his study he, he took me aside and said look i i want to lead a group i'm so train me disciple me and that's why he and i started meeting that's why we're in this conversation right now is as a fairly new believer wanting to learn and grow and lead he he's he, he raised his hand basically is what he did and uh, Mike correct me if I'm wrong but I think you had to raise your hand more than once before I actually took you up on it to make sure you were serious. <laughs> <laughs> that that is rather accurate. Well, that's exciting, Mike. Kudos to you, man. You're a braver man than I was. Well, they're out there. So let me go through this here. Uh, this is called the definition of a Connect Three team. The definition of a Connect Three team. The Connect3 team is the most basic unit within CBMC ministry. 
at various times and places it has been called different names including prayer meeting prayer breakfast bible study committee meeting traditional team and workplace team we're now moving toward one common term the connect three team the connect three team has proven to be invaluable in the critical process of christian growth within cvmc the connect three team serves to connect team members with the vision and mission of cbmc as it connects them to god first and foremost to one another and to the cause of bringing the gospel of jesus christ into the workplace another way to put it would be that the connect three team serves as the foundation for all of our evangelistic and discipleship efforts by spending meaningful time in fellowship praying for those who do not yet know christ sharing personal needs and hurts and studying how to apply biblical principles at home and at work team members grow together in unity and purpose even as they mature individually while most connect three teams meet on a weekly basis it is best defined by its functions rather than its form and i really like this image they have here of the team being in the middle god one other and cause of the gospel that's a great diagram there of what this connect three is all about This next section, I'm going to kind of gloss over, but they talk about form follows function. And um, when form follows function, we end up with a relational movement where we are willing to change old forms for new forms whenever it serves the function to do so. We were talking earlier about how God's using this quarantine time to cause us to get out of our regular routines and find different ways to do the same thing. And that's really what they're talking about in this next section. And I just show you here the different evolution of the material. You know, it started out here, went here, went here, and now it's online. That's just the, it's the same meaning and everything, but it's, it's progressing. This online version was developed um, four years ago. August 18th, four years ago, is when this online Operation Timothy was developed. And now today, it's being used around the world online. It's amazing. So the first thing they taught us to do when I first went through this was as a leader. Now, you wouldn't do this with your group necessarily, but as a leader training another leader is the uh, marketplace ambassador, the 10 attributes of a marketplace ambassador. And if you ever get asked to lead a devotion or a Bible study, this is a great one here, the 10 attributes of a marketplace ambassador. I'll just read them real quick. Uh, number one, walking daily in intimacy with Christ. Two, living in accountable relationships with believers. Hold on, slow down. Walking daily with intimacy with Christ. What was number two? Number two, living in accountable relationships with believers. Okay. Three, sharing faith in Christ in my sphere of influence. Okay. Those are pretty good, aren't they? <laughs> Yeah, they're, they're right in the roundhouse. Number four, helping others grow spiritually through life on life discipleship. Okay. Living an integrated life with proper life priorities. Living an integrated life with proper life priorities. That's the hard one, isn't it? Yeah, that like keeping balances. Some we're always learning. Number six, living a life of generosity. Number six, living a life of generosity. Amen. I knew you'd like that one. Number seven, applying biblical principles in all areas of my life. Number seven, applying biblical principles in all areas of my life. Number eight, Maintaining a standard of excellence with integrity. Number eight, maintaining a standard of excellence with integrity. Okay. Number nine, genuinely caring for people. Genuinely caring for people. And number 10, living out God's call on my life. Living out God's call on my life. And they put the website here, advance.cbmc.com. Advance.cbmc.com. That's where you can go 
and have access to the marketplace ambassador, the 10 attributes of marketplace ambassador, also operation Timothy's there and also living proof is there. Yep. It's literally about two years worth of material at a pretty fast pace. So they really have equipped us to do this. Now here's the good news about the 10 attributes of a marketplace ambassador. It's a framework for spiritual excellence but it's also something you'll never do on your own strength. Yeah. And so if you're trying to clean yourself up to do these, you're bark up the wrong tree. This totally requires God in you. Allow Christ to live through you. So the next thing was establishing a connect three team. So you'll see here, I put in a list of guys that I wanted to ask to be part of my Connect3 team. That was after prayerful consideration. It even says, pray for God to raise up the right members to join your Connect3 team. Prayer is the primary work of our ministry, and it begins by seeking God's direction and in inviting the right people to join you on your Connect3 team. This is how Jesus built his team of disciples, and this is how we should build our team as well. List potential members from your personal ministry. And so I listed eight guys there. And one, two, three, four, five, six. Six of those eight guys joined me in my initial team. And then just give you some ideas on how to establish your Connect3 team. They go into a little more detail here about recruiting to the mission, recruiting to the vision. Can we take a moment and pause and pray real quick? Absolutely, brother. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that you be with me and uh, Rick. Lord, as we explore creating our own three, uh, connect three teams, Lord, uh, give us the men um, that we should be looking to and inviting to come with us to start this team. Men there are going to be great leaders and great examples and great ambassadors. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 Thank you. You're going to want to reach out to these guys and cast the vision for them. And one way you might do that is use the Good Friday video that Victor and I did where he, you know, talked about some of the stories in his book, As You Go. And then I shared about the Connect3 team. Uh, that might be a video that you send to prospective team members to see if they might want to be a part of this with you and help you start a team. Uh, you can also personally can just cast the vision, you know, what, what it means to you and why you want to even do it. Uh, but prayerfully consider who you might add to your team. And then you're going to want to follow up individually with those that express interest in becoming an active part of the Connect3 team to check out their personal commitment to being a vital member of the team. It is a commitment. Uh, you know, the guys that I recruited, I basically told them, you know, we're looking at a minimum two-year commitment with the intention all along of multiplying and reproducing. That was, that was what I kind of set as the uh, bar for guys joining that initial group. The next step is gathering your Connect3 team to get alignment with purpose. The purpose needs to be clear. The purpose needs to be compelling. The purpose needs to be embraced by all team members. And so what we did is uh, we had Victor Dawson actually zoom in to our local meeting when we first started and kind of help us with these things here. And so when you're starting your group, I'd be more than welcome to join you in helping cast the vision and purpose of your Connect3 team. But you definitely want to make sure your team from the beginning gets in, in alignment with the purpose of the Connect3 team. Any questions about that? No. I think that's, that, that's really critical because you have a specific way you want this to go and you don't want to evolve into something else, you know? So if, if you don't set that vision clearly, and like you had on driving the format, hey, this is the way we're doing it and kind of keeping it on track with that and not letting it diverge seems like it would be really important. Absolutely, brother. So the next thing is to register your Connect3 team. And I showed you in the beginning of the website to do that. You, you want to basically go in and register your Connect3 team. 
Okay. And they give you the instructions on how to do that. Then the next part, um, and we're getting towards the end of our training today, is equipping the team for maximum ministry impact. Equip the team to pray using the Marketplace Ambassador prayer card and or the uh, 10 Most Wanted card. And so I got a picture of that. That's what the 10 Most Wanted card looks like. And so that's a major tool in this. Simple so, but powerful. Go ahead. Uh, so theoretically, if we're doing this correctly, a man's 10 Most Wanted card, if he's interested in becoming – a connect three leader that would literally become his group if he's doing this thing right it could it very well could you know if two or three of those guys or even one receives christ that would be the guy you'd want to start this with as you disciple him you'd want to start with him and the cool thing is when a guy becomes a believer he has lost friends because he's been in that world the problem with a lot of christians is they got no lost friends because they've been isolated for so long they don't really have anybody to share christ with but that new believer tends to have a sphere of influence and those guys are usually spiritually hungry too they just don't know it and so that's a great way to start a new connect three team that's amazing and when you're doing that you don't want to start out with living proof you don't want to start with the attributes of an ambassador because those are more for the mature christian you want to start with operation timothy which goes to the foundations and basics of a christian a lot of people receive christ going through operation timothy so one of the things that this praying does on the Temple's one card it promotes accountability and teamwork through mutual intercession as we pray for each other's Temple's one card one thing that uh, we do in our connect three teams that I hope to help all CBMC do globally but right now I know we do and that is we offer guys the opportunity every week to share if they had the opportunity to share Jesus with somebody in the past week that's a little fine point there but it's very very important in my opinion to get that guys that is super duper. That may be one of the most important things that actually hit me immediately, Chuck, because then I'm thinking, I know what the focus of this team is. I have a little, I have automatic accountability. And encouragement. And even, yeah, and encouragement. Like you said, it's accountability in the beginning and then excitement. But that's really, unless we, and I like at the end how you said, you don't really have to say that. But when guys are doing it, you kind of think, well, what am I going to say? You know, even if you don't want to, I want to say something next week. You, you know, know? <laughs> and it's so funny that you say, that. I mentioned this to you earlier, but the first few weeks, Mark Levesque and I, the two who started this a while back, um, we were in that same bubble. You know, we didn't really have relationships with any lost people. And so we get together and we'd be like, do you share Jesus? Well, no, I don't know anybody. And so we purposely, intentionally started getting involved in things where we could meet lost people. And then as the group grew, there was this one guy in particular, Dan Presgrave was his name. Every week he was sharing people with Jesus. And his face would light up and he'd be so excited. And it came from a, oh, I got it. I want to, you know, checklist. No, it was, I want that. I want that experience. So it's, it's just, it's powerful. The joy you saw in his face was incredible. Yep. Every week, yep. every week. And it's like, if God's going to let him do it, I can do it too. I just got to wake up in the morning and say, God, who can I share with today? You got to be fo you got to be intentional. Really. You do. You got to keep and those you know spiritual antennas up. Yeah, and, and you know it's you know where the excitement for me is in following Christ is when you do when you step out and do neat things. So if you want everybody saying I feel flat, well if you feel flat, it's because you're not taking the risk and you're not putting yourself out there because it's it's scary in a lot of ways to do something new. But there's such excitement, passion when you do it, and then you see success in it. Or even if you don't, this that you. You did it. You know, I mean, I did this, you know, God, did, it's not you. Like you I, said, know what you Chuck. I know what you mean. It's, it's God working through you. God like, used me. <laughs> yeah. I'm in this. I, there's no way I can do that 10 list myself. I can't, I've tried to change myself. I can't. But if I say, God, I, I'm sorry for where I failed and please help me. And I need you. Then I, I slowly start seeing and make those changes. Yep. Very good. Yeah. So in here, they got, Go ahead, Mike. I'm sorry. I said prayer is huge. Yep. So praying by name for those who are not yet connected to Christ is one of the unique practices of a fruitful Connect 3 team. Praying for laborers to connect with your Connect 3 team will expand the influence and impact on your efforts by engaging men who share your purpose. 
And then number three is praying for one another. We'll build a strong spiritual bond and help develop a sense of community. You might have, how, how might you specifically pray for each of the above? Using a prayer card, a Temos One list. Oh, and on the back of the Temos One list, let's see if I can find my actual card here. So you got your Temos One on one side. On the opposite side is the list of the band of brothers that you're in service with. And so that's that's your team right there. So you're not only praying for lost guys, but you're praying for your brothers on a regular basis. All right, so there's some Connect Three tips. Names should be from a person's sphere of influence. You know, it's great to pray for our president and people like that. I, I, we should be doing that. But here, the people on your list are people that you, they're in your sphere of influence so God can use you to help along the journey. Be intentional in building and maintaining the relationship and celebrate God's work in their lives as they move one step closer to Jesus. CBMC developed this years and years ago. It's called a spiritual awareness chart. And it helps you understand the different roles, what God does, what you do, and where a man is in his walk with Jesus. And so we're not going to take the time to go through all these, but it starts way down at a negative 10. That individual has no conscious awareness of a supreme being, may be a, a not anti, anti, I can't even say that word. Anti, Agnostic. yeah, doesn't look like that, agnostic. And then it goes up and up and up um, until finally – at a negative one. So there's 10 ways they get closer, closer to Jesus at number negative one is when they actually repent and, and receive faith. So in our role, we don't want to necessarily put guys on a 10 most one list and expect them to, you know, pray the prayer of salvation. The first time we talk to them, it's a gradual process for most men. Now, some people, God's got them ready and they're boom, they go right away. But for most men, it's a gradual process of the steps towards knowing Christ. Then the key, though, is once they become a new creature, to get them along the path to reproduction. Too often, we become babes in Christ and stay there being fed the rest of our lives and never reproduce. What we're trying to encourage is the rest of the process, and it's all spelled out on a spiritual awareness chart, up to the point where you're an active reproducer of disciple makers. So you got God's role, our role, and then the person's response. It's a great chart. To help you keep things in perspective. So we're getting people from milk to meat. Exactly. Well, actually, milk is when they receive Christ. You're getting the 10 steps before they even receive Christ closer and closer to actually knowing who Jesus is. That helps because I, I, I'm not aware of those. And I, you know, I, I think trying to work that guy to the next step would be helpful to me because it's such a leap for some of them. Like you said, some of them don't even acknowledge a supreme power. And, you know, I mean, it's, that'll be, at least you could see some progress in people without, before they can receive Christ, you know, I think that would be encouraging or at least what I can work on in the next step. You can only present Christ so many times and that they're not getting it. They're not getting it. How do I help them get to the next step or what am I working for them is in my relationship with them to see next, you know, yeah. you'll absolutely love the series called living proof because it's a, I think it's 12 weeks if I'm not mistaken. It's a 12 week series on how to do that exact thing. Uh, and they really do a great job of training on that. So as we wrap up today, I'm going to just quickly show you these next uh, five steps, but these are the six steps in actually equipping your team. Um, that first step was equipping the team to pray and understand a spiritual awareness chart. That was step one. So equip your team to pray using a 10 most wanted card and a spiritual awareness chart. The second step is to equip your team with principles of teamwork. And basically there's six principles to a fruitful teamwork. Number one, model the mission and vision as a way of life. Number two, encourage participation by valuing every member's unique contribution. Number three, create and maintain effective channels of communication. Typically, it's not a one time a week you meet and you don't think about them the rest of the week. It's just they become part of your life. You, you, you actually connect with these people. 
Number four, cultivate a safe, respectful team environment resulting in authentic relationships. Number five, identify and develop new leaders for new teams. And then number six, celebrate the fruit of the team's labor, the ends of the ministry. This is kind of a cute little thing down here at the bottom of the train manual here. This guy is surviving. And it says, the good news is we've navigated these waters a few times and have learned some things about surviving and thriving while on the journey. Remember, isolation is dangerous. You don't have to go it alone. Now, was that created before the coronavirus or after? This was created before. <laughs> the irony. I love it. Hey, Chuck, is there anything in there uh, about, you know, you had a new guy today sharing some pretty intimate stuff about confidentiality and, and how what is said in this meeting doesn't go beyond this meeting? Or how, how is that conveyed to these guys? Um, you know, because that seems to be really critical. It is. Uh, two points, there, Rick. I'm glad you brought that up. Number one, that is something when you're starting your group. And as every new person comes in, you want to communicate that to the group. Uh, that what is said here stays here. You know, this is not a prayer chain gossip. This is, you know, what's said in the group stays in the group. But also, one of the reasons he was so vulnerable with us today was the fact that we were vulnerable. You know, the guys, as we share our hurts and what we're stressed about, if you try to act like Mr. Holy Roller, nothing bothers you, you know, sure, God gives you a peace. And there's a, but when you share what's stressing you in life, it makes it to where the new guy feels comfortable. Hey, these are real guys. They're, they're, they're just like me. And so it's really important that you as the leader open, open up a little bit and share what's really going on in your life, what, what's causing you some stress. It's powerful. That's now one of the reasons me, he was so comfortable sharing today. Now, let me ask you one other question, and I don't know the answer to this at all. I have any idea. How do we stop guys from trying to fix each other when they do open up and share? Because, I mean, there's, there's a real fine line between, hey, here's counsel, but then if I just bared my soul to you, a lot of times I don't want to hear how to fix it. I just want to hear that you heard me. That's all I need. And we tend to jump on this thing where everybody, all the guys around the table then start trying to fix that guy. And I like cringe with every guy that speaks. And unfortunately, one of the guys that speaks is me. Yeah. But how do we? How one, do we of the things, one of the things, and that's really good that you brought that up. Um, the job of the facilitator in this is pretty easy because all the material is here for you. But the job as a facilitator is also difficult because you, you have to kind of control the person who wants to talk too much. You got to engage the person who doesn't want to talk at all. And so it's a balancing act. One of the things you really want to harp on is that very thing, Rick. And you got to you do it by coaching. And when you see somebody start doing that, you got to just stop them. And you got to say, look, now is not the time or place for that. We we're going to pray for that need. And you notice today, that was such a serious need that I stopped right then and we prayed for him right then. You don't wait till the prayer time. Yeah. When, there's, when there's a serious need like that, a guy bears a soul, you stop and you pray for him right then and there. In fact, uh, you know, that, that all of a sudden becomes the most important thing you can do at that time. But as far as people, um, you know, wanting to coach and mentor him, you, you got to kind of just reel it in and say, look, I love the fact that you want to do that. I'd, I'd encourage you to, if you know the guy and trust his counsel, I'd say I'd, I'd encourage you to, to go have coffee when you can have coffee again, uh, but maybe meet one on one or two and go a little deeper. That's how you do it. And yeah, yeah Rick, I'm, I'm I'm guilty of that too. I mean, even today, I I felt the Holy Spirit share something that I want to share with him. I I should have sought permission to have do that outside the team to lead by example. So that's a that's a great point. Well, no, I think when you feel the Holy uh, one thing, be careful though. Yeah, when you feel the Holy Spirit pushing you and you. They'll do the double check and it's not you because I can usually tell if it's not me, if it's me, not him, is if I really would not normally want to do that and he's saying do it, then usually I know it's him. But if it's something like, <laughs> I need to do this, I, I really should share this and that's probably <laughs> me. But if, it's, if he's taking me a place like, God, can you send somebody else, then I know that's him. I know it's him. The Holy Spirit always makes you do something that you are uncomfortable doing. Right. 
is <laughs> it's how I always know. Like, do I feel uncomfortable? Yeah, okay, it's the Holy Spirit. <laughs> well, and then plus, if I if I do <laughs> go home and say, as long as you ask him and he doesn't say no, you know, I'll, even if it doesn't make me uncomfortable, I say, are you sure you want me to do this? Because it could be me, and he'll say, yeah, go ahead. Um, yeah. yeah, you're absolutely but, right. You do want to be led by the Holy Spirit, but you got to be careful because right. – Yes. Uh, you don't want nobody preaching, that's for sure. As a facilitator, in fact, there were a couple times, even today, where the answer was just a little different than I believe. But right. you don't you don't correct them. You let the Holy Spirit right. do that. Um, right. Let the discussion flow. Let people have their opinions. And don't constantly be correcting somebody. What? Like, yeah, you're off base a little bit there. No, God will handle that. Trust me. Uh, yeah, I yeah I saw that happen two or three times, too. Always does. I thought I thought you handled it real wise. And, you know, it's really God's word and their relationship and getting them like when you were telling them to listen and stuff that's really his job to adapt their theology to what is more correct and a lot of teams guys don't know because they don't know the word yet so of course they don't know but um yeah i saw that and that that was cool the way he handled that well one thing that comes up a lot is it doesn't matter what a person's faith denomination is somebody of a different denomination will say something derogatory in a way about another denomination and you got to yeah, reel that in right away and you got to make sure that people know that look you know there are people in every church you know. that know jesus and there's people in every church that don't know jesus so right. you got to kind of always sit out there because you never know a person's background when you're talking to people so yep. so we can end in this and then we'll, we'll sit around and visit a few minutes if we want but step number one is equip people with a 10 most one prayer card and the spiritual awareness chart that's step one step two is equipping a team with the principles of teamwork step three here is equip them with the tools that we talked about earlier at the marketplace ambassador advanced system and that's simply this website right here if you look on the screen advancedcbmc.com advancedcbmc.com step four is you equip the team in the use of the marketplace ambassador attribute studies. <clears throat> Again, this is one of the last things I do with my team is the attributes. Unless it's a mature group that I have formed, then we will go through the attributes first. Otherwise, I'm saving this till later because it's a little drier and I don't want my new people to get turned off. This is a little deeper for people that have already been walking with the Lord and they're looking now to start this reproduction. You can go back to that marketplace ambassador study that's step four step five this is probably probably my favorite it's a uh, equip the team with the principles of evangelism as a lifestyle and we use this material here called living proof and it's all included in the cbmc materials but there's a 12-week study on living proof it's absolutely phenomenal great training and then last but not least is step six which is the Operation Timothy study. It's broken into three books, five to six lessons, maybe seven per chapters per book. But man, it is the meat and potatoes of maturing as a Christian and even becoming a Christian. So in the training session that we're in today, uh, that concludes session one. And the wow. summary points, uh, number one summary point is pray for God to Raise up the right members to join your team. Two, recruit to the CBMC mission and vision, which is evangelism and discipleship. Number three, gather the team to get alignment with purpose. And this is not for everybody. You just got to realize that going in. And if it's not for somebody, you want them to know that early so they don't waste their time or yours. Fourth point is register your team at oneview.cbmc.com, one, O-N-E, view, V-I-E-W, dot cbmc.com. Or you go back to that site we showed earlier, and I got that big register your team button. Equip your team. There's six points we covered. I'll recap them here, and then we're done. Number one, to pray using the 10 most wanted card. Two, with the Principles of teamwork. There are six principles of an effective team. Number three, in the use of the marketplace ambassador advancement system. 
And that's where we really go for all this material. Once you're trained as a Connect 3 team leader, you're going to go to that marketplace ambassador advancement system for all your material after that. Then number four, when you're equipping your team is using the marketplace ambassador attribute studies. As I mentioned, that's more for the mature group. Put that off till later if you're starting a new group. The next one is using the principles of evangelism as a lifestyle. Again, that's for a group that's already Christian. And then the last one is with the principles of discipleship um, as a lifestyle. And that's the Operation Timothy. So those are the pieces here. And that's a recap of session one of training to be a Connect 3 team leader. Any questions? No. Let me ask you guys a couple quick questions and we'll wrap up with these questions. These are called um, questions for reflection and action. What were you surprised to learn from this session today? Were you surprised about anything that you learned today? Um, I was surprised about the um, spiritual awareness chart on how to um, take a man from not believing and knowing nothing in the, the gradual progression. Good, good. Rick, um, any surprises or enlightenments for you? Um, just there's a volume of material there. There's a lot of there's a lot of aids for a lot of different things that I've been interested in learning on. So I can use those resources. It's a little bit like consuming from a fire hose right now, but I'm I just need to know where the stuff is at so I can go consume it when I can consume it. But there's a lot of information here, a lot of resources that is you a lot of the questions I asked you pointed me to a resource every time so and I wrote that down so I obviously can't attack them all at once but I can go back one at a time and start consuming some of that stuff that I, I need some help on which was really good. Excellent. Uh, second of three questions. What questions do you still have from this session? How can these questions um, be answered? So theoretically, after we finish session three, we should be, we should already have a plan of action. Our key steps are six essential steps, and we should basically be equipped and ready to fully integrate and start our group. Yeah, but if you remember in the very beginning, this could be up to a year-long process of de developing your team. The Chuck, I don't work that way. I don't either. <laughs> I don't either, brother. But you sound like me. But and then you know, God, God brings you kind of people because you're ready to run but you got to remember this this is a process for most people there's a lot here uh some people spend six months in prayer before they even ask somebody to join their team so you got to let people go at their pace okay, okay. So, for me when i answer so, that question go ahead I'm Rick, sorry. you're a go 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 guy too yeah i am and i would say something to you if you're ready to go 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 get if you've got a friend or somebody or you're, you know somebody that's seeking try to grab them now you can obviously grab them and start meeting do whatever you want now and then get trained on your material and then try to grow that in a group so if you're ready to go go now go go reach out to somebody be prepared for a lot of rejection but go grab that guy anybody that's willing to meet with you just grab them start studying the bible or do something else and then you can get ready to grow that into a connect three so you don't have to I'm wait healing rejection what so I'm a professional at handling rejection. I thought I was too until I had 10 guys say no until one guy said yes. I mean, it kind of wore me down a little that's bit. That's about the right numbers. Yeah. And actually, that's probably more accurate of what your numbers are going to be. You're going to ask 10 and only one's going to say yes normally. And yeah. I'm glad you bring that up because I had six out of eight say yes. That's unusual. But those are these are guys I've been in the trenches with for a long time. You know, this was these were not random people. These were... These were guys that I've been in ministry with for a long time. That's why it was six out of eight. So that's a great point. I don't want to set that bar so high that people are like, oh, what's wrong with me? Great point. I will tell you one thing, Mike. Um, God's gifted you. As you're natural at this. You know, you invited Joe to our Bible study. You had the guy on online today from Nebraska. <clears throat> the three of you could start a Connect 3 team. That'd be a perfect start. Now, pray about it and see what God tells you, but me looking in, that looks obvious. For me, the answer to that question, what I learned, what I need answered, like Rick said, I just need to dig in and get started. I, I need to, you know, I'm looking forward to it, but I need to dig in and get started. Last question, we'll wrap up with this. What specific team-related steps do you want to take as a result of this session? 
I'm obviously going to develop a list. Ray about I have a lot of, I probably have six or seven people already in mind. Some believers, some non-believers. I definitely want some people who already believe involved. They have good core, uh, mature understanding. Great. Rick, how about you? What's your next action step? Um, definitely start praying for who my list should be. Um, I do want to spend some time praying about that and getting that together. And, and then obviously there's just a buku amount of training that I, I want to start. I, and for me, I have to put it on my calendar because if I don't put it on my calendar, I don't do it. So I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to put like some training times in my week to start training. Cause if I don't schedule it, I won't do it. So I got to do that. You know, time blocking very well. Yeah. Uh, there's a few things like skills I've gained. So Rick, just a suggestion is you might go to the ministry involved in, uh, you might go to your church and talk to leaders and let them know what you're wanting to start and see if they know of any people that might be as gung ho as you are about this specific topic. Uh, because sometimes people are out there, you just don't know it. So, that's a good, that's good. Instead of just using your personal sphere. Um, yeah, I, that the cry for discipleship and evangelism right now is a loud cry. And I think I'm not seeing a lot of places. This is one of the first places because I've been looking for a place to plug in with something specifically like this. And I've been looking for four months and I finally found something. So I don't think it's terribly obvious to everybody. Oh, here's a place you can go and get going, you know. Right. So I'm going to go back to those same places I was asking and say, hey, is there anybody you think could be interested in this? Because we're getting ready to I'm getting ready to start something and you know this we need people and we need people that are interested in this too so yeah that's a good idea so do you guys want to do this on a weekly basis uh, we got two more weeks of this um, mike with your schedule can you do it weekly or i'd like to do every other week if you guys could but if you guys need to do it weekly i can do it it's just it's it's already like from a uh, a fire hose there's so much here i'd like to do some more before we meet again instead of gets get more so if you've watched this recording uh basically get back with the person who shared this video with you uh victor dawson is a great resource at cbmc uh he right now is responsible nationally for starting these teams so he'd be a great resource and i'll have his contact information in the video description uh if you like the contents of this video be sure and subscribe to my channel uh always trying to put helpful information out there to help people god bless y'all and uh, rick and Mike, thank you for letting me uh, share this on video.